Well, amen. Well, as we, as we was praying for this, for this service today, and, and listen, I, I say this a lot. Whether you're sitting here in house, whether you're watching on Facebook, even to me preaching today, God don't make mistakes. He doesn't make mistakes. Amen? He's a God that cannot lie. Amen? You know, brother, we, we've always known this. Brother Brian's really brought it to our attention the last few weeks that God is sovereign. Amen? Do, do you believe that? Brother Terry believes that. Anybody else? That God is sovereign. That he is God all by himself. And amen, that, that, that he knows exactly what he's doing. So today, as I was praying for this service today, and, and, and listen, I, I confess that, uh, you know, I, I think, God, my delivery, how, how's my, I, 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 God forgive me, I compare myself sometimes, but God said, just be a vessel, amen, and you just, you just speak the word that, that I give you, so, so amen. So, so today, the word really stems off from last Sunday, Healing Sunday, and as I was praying and just, just getting ready for today, which Pastor Brian uh, told us uh, Monday morning. He said, uh, pa- Pastor Ditto and I, he's like, somebody's got Sunday. And I was like, Pastor Ditto's got it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm praying for it right now. Amen. Yeah, she, she's like, nope, not me. Amen. But again, God is sovereign. God knows. And God said, all right, Joy, you got it. But, uh, but as I was praying for this, so I had all week, and, and I, I don't want to get ahead of God ever. And so, because I can, as Brother Brian says, I can chase a rabbit. I got several notes. If you look at my computer, I probably got 20 different titles of something that, that's birthed but hasn't been completed yet. Yeah, amen? So, so I, was, I was like, okay, God, what is it? And so I, I came to John 5. That's where the title of the message comes today. And I'll go ahead and give you the title is this. It says, will, will you be made whole? Will you be made well? Will you, will you be made, will you be healed? And, and so I was thinking about that. I said, okay, God, so we're sticking in the vein of healing Sunday. And can I say this? We, I really felt strong in my spirit that last Sunday, the 27th, was healing Sunday. But amen, but healing doesn't just, isn't just one day, amen? God isn't just a one-time God, amen? And I realized, and I said it then, I'll say it again today, that when I say healing, I know that we, our, our, our religious minds think lame walking, the mute speaking, the blind eyes open, amen? And God can do that, amen? Do we agree with that? But, but, but Brother Brian said it probably best last Sunday is that, it, it's, we're talking about the sickness of the church, Amen. We're talking about the spiritual sickness. And amen. God, if somebody want, you want somebody to be healed today physically, let it be so. But, but I believe where we're at, come on, if we look around, we're honest. If we look at our country, if we look at our state, if we look at our families, if we look at our church, amen, we're sick. Amen. And God is wanting to heal. And he, hallelujah. And so, so starting last night, bring us in today. God, we just, we just want you to have your way. And so as I was thinking, one thing that God spoke last Sunday that stirred my spirit that I felt drawn to bring it over today is, is that many are holding on to their wounds rather than the promises. Amen? And, and you, come on, you can look again. Country, state, church, you can look at ourselves, our family. Lot, hold on to our wounds. Come on, how many, come on, how many of you married? How many of you had a fight over something from yesterday? How I many had a fight a couple years for something a couple years ago? Amen. Because the enemy wants to keep the scab, wants to keep that wound raw. Amen. And so, with that being said, hallelujah. I'm mean, gonna I mean, pray one more time. Father God, I just come to you right now. And God, I just pray, calm my nerves. God, I want to deliver the word today. God, again, as we prayed earlier, and I said it now, I'm gonna say it again. God, we surrender. God, because healing is in the house. Deliverance is in the house. Salvation is in the house, God. So we just pray you have your will and your way. Lord, just speak now your word, God, and, and just speak now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I want to tell you how this word was confirmed because I thought, God, I, 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 we all, amen, as ministers or preachers, we want a fresh word, but God brought this back. And I just want to tell you how God confirmed this. And so, again, we're, we're in John chapter 5. And listen, I'm just going to read you scripture. I don't have points today. We're going to read a few verses. But the title did come out of verse 6. When Jesus saw him lying there. Now, this is a man who's been laying here for 38 years. But it said, when Jesus saw him lying there, he already knew he'd been there a long time. And Jesus said to him, do you want to be made well? So we're going to go back to verse 1 and read down. But I want to tell you a little bit how this, how this was confirmed, how God confirmed this. I shared this with Christina and my girls Yesterday, and Matt, I think it says, you need to share that. But uh, the first verse says, there was a feast going, t- going on. So Jesus was heading to Jerusalem. How many of you know right now this is the Feast of Tabernacles going on right now, the Jewish holiday, amen? 
And so I'm going to tell you these things to line you up to see how God set you and I up. Facebook, God set us up today for a miracle. Amen? God, this is no accident or coincidence. I'll say it again. Amen? God has set you and I up today for the word for a miracle. So I want you to get this. So there's a feast right now going on. Same thing in the scriptures. There was a feast going on. This is the Feast of the Tabernacles, the Jewish holiday they're celebrating. And, and, and one thing they do, and I, you need to go back and study your, your history. I, I challenge you to study the, the Hebrew history, but they build these huts called Sukkots. And it's a reminder. It's a reminder from where they had been. Amen? And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but if we let a wound heal, it'll scar. And when we see that scar, it's a reminder from where we've been, from the battle we've been in. So the Sukkots are a reminder. So, so God, that's one thing God showed me. And, and again, God kept us in the lane of healing. I, I don't follow Lana Valser every day, but if any of you know her, she is a prophetess from Australia. And, and I'm going to confess, my girl's got me set up on, is it, it's Instagram, right? I, I, was, I, I was getting ready to say Twitter, but it's not Twitter. It's Instagram. That's, that's how smart I am. That's how much I keep up with it. But I forget about it. I, I, about every three or four days, oh, yeah, let me look at that. And so I got her on there. And the first thing that I saw, again, this is just confirmation that God has a word for us today and that you and I are to receive. But, but the heading of this was, we're entering in a season of rapid acceleration and healing. And when I saw that, I thought, okay, God, I got you. I got you. And then, of course, this Bible story we were getting ready to read, there is a pool called be, I'm going to say it right, be, Bethesda, okay, I was getting ready to say Bathsheba, that's not it, not Bathsheba, Bethesda, thank you Holy Ghost, and so, and then, and then it got confirmation, I got up Saturday morning, flipped the news on, we seen that President Trump was heading to Walter Reed Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland, now this is how God speaks to me, does God speak to anybody else, oh, yeah. amen, and so, when I, I was like, okay God, I got it, I got it, and so as, as we began to, 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 to go this way, and so I just want to start reading, amen, in, in verse 1, and it says this, there was a Jewish feast, a festival. And again, I told you about the festival that we're in right now. It says, and Jesus went to Jerusalem, verse 2. Now in Jerusalem, near the sheep gate, amen, Jesus Christ said, I know my sheep and they hear my voice. Amen. How many of you are sheep this morning? Amen. This is a word for you. Jesus also said there is another sheep, group of sheep that's not of his. Amen. This is for everybody this morning. So he says that they enter the sheep gate. And there's a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five. Amen. I love, again, Bible numerics. God speaks in Bible numerics. Number five is grace. Amen. There is five porticles or porches. Remember, I was talking about the huts earlier for the Feast of the Tabernacles. But there were five porches. And these porches lay a great number of people who were sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed. Amen, I'm, we're talking physical, but we're talking spiritual also. They were waiting for the stirring of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down into the pool at appointed times and stirred the water. How many know that the Holy Spirit is present? We, we quote Matthew 18 a lot. But where two of us come together in his name, he is in the midst. Amen, healing is in the house. The water is being stirred even as we speak, amen. And I want to ask you this this morning. I asked you last week, how many of you need a healing? Come on. I'm looking around. I'm looking at you. I love the lights today. I can see pretty good, even with these glasses, these new glasses I got. Amen, amen. You heard that, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Listen, last week we had an amazing service. God moved. How many of you experienced an encounter of God last week? Amen. And as I said earlier, God is not limited. He's not bound. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So today, one more time, I want to see those hands. Who wants a healing today? How many of you got lost loved ones in your family that needs the ultimate healing? Amen, God, you see the hands, amen? And so, and so it says that at a season, the water will be stirred, and the first one to go in after the water was stirred was healed. Verse five, there was a certain man there who had been ill for 38 years. Again, Bible numerics, number 30 is slavery. See, the enemy wants to take the wounds of yesterday and keep you bound. Amen, he wants to keep you under and enslaved, Amen. The wounds of yesterday, I'm sitting here thinking, come on, Holy Ghost. So I'll give you a little testimony of myself. I was going to open to you. Even in preparation for this service, the enemy was trying to pick at a wound that had been healed, but, but he'll still poke. I mean, how many knows the, the fiery darts of the enemy will still cut? Amen. And so uh, 
Even as I was preparing for this service, I'm almost going to confess to you, uh, a sin that I battle is less than, that not worthy. And I touched on a little bit earlier. But even as I was preparing for this service, the enemy began to say, who do you think you are? The enemy tried to pick, amen, a wound from yesterday to get me to not walk in the promises today. He began to pick. He said, who do you think you are? He said, you remember the words spoken over you even as a child? Come on, can I be open to you? I love saying, I love being raw. He even said, remember, remember your mom and dad got married because you was conceived. You was an accident. The enemy is trying to pick, to, to put me less than. Come on, can I bear witness with anybody? He was trying to pick. He, he was trying to rob my promises, trying to get me to look at what was. He said, he said remember, remember that, that you was an accident. And I, I remember even as I got older, I was about 10, 11, and I seen my grandparents, even my dad playing guitar and music. I thought, I was drawn to it. I thought, I can do that. But the enemy said, no, you can't. You're an accident. And even as my parents began to push me to take guitar lessons, and even way back when, they paid $5 a week for a lesson, I remember the words of some. And they, 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 maybe they meant it. They didn't mean it harmful, but the enemy knows. But they, they said, he'll never use it. He's too shy. And the enemy is trying to pick. Are, are, are you with me? And, and here I am. I was getting in a, in a, in a fetal position. Thank God, what are you doing? Why do you have me at Oakland Baptist Church? And I began to listen to the lies. But then, amen. <laughs> I remember my promises, amen. And I remember that the same Jesus that died on the cross for my salvation took stripes for my healing. And I thought, not today, not today. I look back at the scars, and I look at the scar where God changed my life. And not only am I saved and born again, I'm head and bound, I'm anointed, and I can preach the word, amen. And so today, I wanna ask you, do you wanna be made whole today, amen? It don't matter what was yesterday, it don't matter what happened this morning. Today, God wants to make you whole. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Shoo. Amen. <laughs> I receive it. How many of you receive it today? Amen. Receive it today. Verse 6. When Jesus knew that he was lying there. <laughs> when Jesus seen him lying there and knowing that he had been in that condition a long time. Some of you have been battling a long time. Get this. He said to him. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to get well? And how many of us, listen, as I stand here today and I pose that question to you, we can say yes, but a lot of times we act like he did. We answer like he did. He, he falls back. See, he'd been laying there for 38 years. His wound had become his normality. He was accepted it. This is who I am. He, 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 my God, he had the King of kings and the Lord of lords just come to him and say, do you want to be made whole? But just like us, again, the altar's open. What, what do we say? What did he say? He falls back on a crutch. Sir, I have no one to put me in to pull the water. See, he was falling back on waiting for man to do it. He was falling back looking at his flesh, looking at his, at his physical ability. He said, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm coming to get in myself, someone else steps down ahead of me. See, it was his crutch. Poor old me. And I, I say that lightly. I understand what I'm saying. But we're not careful. We'll let the wounds of yesterday be a crutch to, to explain why we are doing what we're doing. You, is that, you understand what I'm saying? Come on, listen. Your granddaddy's a drunkard. Your daddy's a drunkard. You're going to be a drunkard. Don't receive that. Don't let that be the crutch for you. Does that make sense? Listen, you, the, your parents are drug addicts. You're a drug addict. No, you're not. In Jesus' name. You understand? Amen. Do you receive that? Amen. So, so I think about, can I give you another testimony? And I, and I wouldn't really think about this today until this morning. So, my wife, I'm going to tell you a little story, a testimony about her and her family. Is it okay, hon? Amen. <laughs> I know how Brother Brian feels now. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I'm going to get it when I get off this stage. <laughs> Amen. But, but listen, you got to choose. And today, you got to choose to break off the generational curses in your life. Amen. I believe God wants to deliver. You don't have to live in what mom and daddy was yesterday. You can't get to heaven on their coattail, and I'm not going to hell on it either. Amen. But my wife, she, uh, oh, excuse me. My wife, <laughs> she, uh, I think back about her, her family. And listen, I'm not, I'm not speaking evil. I'm not speaking bad. But, but her testimony, the scar that she's got that she can share to help others. But in, in, in her, on her mom's side, it was multiple relationships. On her mom's side, it was multiple children by multiple men. Are you following me? Listen, her daddy died at age 56. Her mama passed away a few years ago at 59. She had an aunt pass away at 50, 59. 
And if you're not careful, you'll receive that. And if you're not careful, that's my crutch. That's why I am the way that I am. You understand what I'm saying? But praise God, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. And, and, and so when I got saved when I was 12. She was, how old was you? 12, 15. And so I know it was just a few weeks ago when I say this. We got married when I was 20. She was 19. Amen. And, but thank God for the Holy Spirit I, that, that, that he began to teach us. And, you, and I, I don't know, it's, it's the one sowing seed into us. I think a glorious hedge bath and, and those just sowing, sowing life into us. But, and we knew then that, you know what, we got to break some stuff off. We got to do a house cleaning. That is not who you are. You will, you will live to be old. Amen. We, you and I will be married forever. Amen. Our kids are our kids and not nobody. You understand what I'm saying? And so we decided to, you know what, let, let the wounds heal. But the thing about a scar is you don't feel it no more. You heard Brother Brian say that, but you see it. We've we seen, we seen what took place, but not us. Amen. So we chose to walk in. We chose to put it on. And so, and so today I ask you, do you want to be made whole? I, I'm going to try to stay, stay, stay in thought here. Verse 7, he, he says, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm coming to get in, myself, someone else steps down to me. It became his crutch. Jesus said to him, I love this. It's just, we make it difficult. Get up. Pick up your pallet and walk. See, the pallet shows that he become comfortable in it. You know what I'm saying? The pallet shows, if you look up, if you dig, go dig in the Greek right here about this word pallet or mat, it was a symbol, 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 excuse me, it was symbolic of a poor man, of an ill man. And so, why, why, why would God want him to pick it up and take it with him? See, it says, get up and walk, and immediately the man was healed, recovered his strength, and picked up his pallet. And so, see, the pallet is not the illness. The pallet is not the sickness. The pallet is not the heartbreak, but the pallet has become a scab. It's become a testimony. You heard what I'm saying this morning. The pallet went from a sign of hurt to a testimony of healing. The pallet was the illness, like I said, but now it had become evidence of what was but the healing in his life. No longer is he sick. If we'll quit going back to picking the scabs of the wounds, the scabs will make a scar become a testimony. And so today, I, I asked God, I said, God, how can I, how, how, what is it, you, how can I get this across? Because I want to make sure it's understandable. And I, and I thought about, God just downloaded this to me Friday, and I was thinking about my wife, and then God said, no, 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 I, I'm bringing my whole family in this today. I think on your daughters. I thought about Madeline, Audrey, and Claire Beth. Lord, 17, 12, and 7, I think she's 17. She, so I'm telling you, but, but I thought about my daughters, and God said, God said, explain it this way. And I was thinking about it, and Audrey, I'm going to pick on you this, this morning. So I was thinking about Audrey. I know Audrey, if you know any of her, she, she's 12, looks like she's 20, but, but she loves to dance. Her God-given ability and talent is dancing. That is her form of worship. And so God, says, God said, share it this way. How many, how many of you got somebody that dances in your family? I'm talking about dances. Now listen, she, she loves ballet. I never liked ballet. I thought, bruh, you know, ba ba ballet, you know. And, but, but, uh, but, but she loved ballet, and I could see how she, so passionate she was in it and how she would use it to worship God and to serve God. I was like, okay, we're going to invest in this. Amen. But, but how many of you have bought ballet shoes? You know, you know the ones where you stand on your toes? You know what I'm saying? It's got the wooden end. You, you, you pay Air Jordan prices for shoes that you can't play ball in. You know, I, I think, I don't, I, a pair of shoes has got a piece of wood in the toe of it. I think, God, what? But, but they're high is what I'm saying. But here's the thing. Here's what God showed me. And I want you to get this today. It's so good. And God, I pray that I can explain it the way you did to me. But Audrey couldn't afford those shoes. But her father, I said, honey, you're going to get them. I'll promise them to you. Her father went and paid a price in order to give her something where she could walk out her destiny. Are you, are you, you understand what I'm saying? And so, and so, this is what God showed me. I can, I can get, I went and paid that price for them shoes. I can give them to her. She can pack them around all she wants. She can show them to you. Look what my father got me. How many of us are like that? We, we take God's promises. And we say, oh, yes and amen, they're mine. I am healed. I am saved. I'm born again. I'm delivered. Well, listen, until she put the shoes on, 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Until she put them on and laced them up, you couldn't pull them off. Do you understand what I'm saying? They became her. They became part of her. Until she, listen, until she put them shoes on, she could not walk in the promise that I gave her. Are you understand what I'm saying? So many of us, I'm saved, I'm born again. But if it's God's will, I'll be healed. Come on. If it's God's will, I'll be set free. Maybe God knows, maybe this is how I'm supposed to be. It's not a crutch, amen? Today, what I want to tell you, and, 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 and resemble to those shoes, I want you to put on the promises today. Today, we say this a lot. I pray that you, me, Facebook, I'm going to say it, I'll say it every Sunday. I pray that none of us leave the same way we came in. Amen. Today is the day of salvation for somebody that's lost. But today is the day of healing for those of you who are struggling. I'm talking about the, the battles in the mind, the battles of your marriage, of your relationships. Today is the day I want you to put on your promises. Amen. We're going to walk in this way, but we're going to walk out. We're going to walk out ballet shoes on today. Amen. I want you to lace them up. Amen. Come on. Amen. Ballet shoes. Don't, don't picture that. I just saw Mike Kiger wearing ballet shoes. No. <laughs> Come on, receive that, Brother Mike. <laughs> Amen. But I want to share with you a few things that block our healing, that block our promises. Are you getting this today? I said, God, so what is it as the church? What is it as our families? What is it as me, God? What is it as us that's blocking these promises? We, we say we know they're ours. And again, we're even packing them around. But why aren't they activated? Why? What is it, God, that, what, what is it me? And again, this is a word for today. As again, as we look at our country, as we look at our state, our city, as we look at our church. What is it, God, blocking your promises? What is it, God, blocking revival? What is it, God, blocking the, the five-fold gifts of the ministry? One is lack of faith. Amen. Hebrews eleven six 6 says this, but without faith, it is impossible. I love this. If you study this out, I love the Amplified on this. And not only is it impossible, please God, it is impossible. Remember, I was talking about walking. It is impossible to walk with God and promise and please Him. You understand what I'm saying? For whoever comes near to God must, must believe as a necessity, believe that God exists and that He rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. When you walk in your promises, you're, you're diligently walking in Him. You're diligently seeking Him. James 1, 6 through 8 says, but He... But he must ask for wisdom. How about you and I? We must ask for wisdom in faith without doubting. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of sea that is blown about, tossed to and fro. You know, I, I'm healed, I'm sick, I'm saved, I'm lost. Verse 7 says, For such a person, now what's talking about wisdom, but get this, for such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord, being double minded, being back and forth, being unstable in all his ways. But not only that, another part as far as lack of faith, come on, faith takes action. Again, putting on those ballet shoes. Audrey could dance all she wanted to, packing those promises under her arm, but until she became one and put them on, you got to put action to it. But come on, James 2, 17, in the same way, faith by itself, Now I love this NIV version, if it is not accompanied or put into action, it is dead. And so what's some other things that block? And again, as I was praying for this service, as I was praying specifically for this house, for revival, for healing, and I look at our country, I said, God, what is it, God? What are some other things that's blocking your promises, your healings? Number two is unforgiveness. Matthew 6, 9 through 15. Greg, I want to ask you and, you and Glenn to come on back. Matthew 6, 9 through 15. Pray that in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Come on, you know the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come. Listen, this morning I was thinking during worship, God, you're holy. You are holy. Listen, we, we, we were singing this prayer. Then, God, we say your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth, in earth. Look at your neighbor and say, you're nothing but earth. Made from the dust, amen? God wants your kingdom. Your, your will be done on earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. Then it says, verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and resentment. I'm going to say that again, letting go of the wrong and resentment. Verse 13, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 14, for if, we're talking about unforgiveness, for if you forgive others their trespasses, 
their sin, their recklessness against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, and I love this. Again, if you study this out, when you don't forgive, you're nurturing the hurt. You're picking the wound. Are you, are you with me this morning? If you don't forget others, if you keep that scab open, then your Father will not forgive your trespasses. I didn't say that. That's God. What's, I, got, I got a few more here, but I just want to stick in right there for a minute. What is blocking God moving in your life? I've been your associate pastor now for, it'll be a year and a half in January, a year and a few months. We've been here at Elkhorn for about a little over three years, almost three years and three or four months. But, but I'll never forget when God brought us into, into this position, if you want to call it that. I just knew it was God said go, and I, I said yes. One of the first visits I did with Brother Brian was to a man that had unforgiveness. And you've heard Brother Brian tell the story. He had it for nine, uh, 72 years. The next encounter I had was with a member here in church. And one thing they shared with me, they, they said, I got something against Elkhorn from 1995. I thought, my God, this is real. We're praying for our lost loved ones. We're praying for healing. We're praying for revival, but we don't love our neighbor. I'm expecting God to move my life, and I'm even packing the promises around, but I've not put them on because I got hate and bitterness on. You understand what I'm saying? Come on. Amen. So what is it blocking, hindering God's move in your life? So we go from unforgiveness into no reconciliation. Number three, Matthew chapter 5, 21 through 24. It says, if you heard that it was said to men of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall, not, shall, shall be guilty before the court. But I, he simply says, but I say to you that everyone who continues to be in anger, who continues to be in bitterness, in, in offense, Everyone who continues to be in anger with his brother or harbors malice against him shall be guilty before the court. What it's telling us is you may not murder physically with a knife or a gun, but with your words, with your deeds. He says, and whoever speaks to his brother, Raka, I mean you idiot, or you speak evil against him, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Verse 23, so if you are presenting your offering, we just talked about this, if you're presenting your offering at the altar, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. You can sacrifice all day you want. You can praise, you can speak in tongues, you can run the aisles, you can stay on this altar. If you're presenting your offering at the altar, and while there you remember that there's a brother that has something, has a grievance, a complaint against you, it says, leave your offering there at the altar and go. Right now. Leave it and go make things right. Leave your offering at the altar and go. First make peace. Then come and present your offering. And if we're not careful, no reconciliation. The unforgiveness goes into rec no reconciliation. So what happens? Number four is pride and selfishness. What's blocking our healing today? What's blocking God's move? James 4, 1 through 3. What is the source of quarrels and conflict among you? Is not the source your pleasure that wage war in your members? When I read that, I think about the body of Christ. What is it that's causing the, the, the hindrance of the move? What is it that, I think about the book of Acts, the, where the church was birthed. And guess what? I look at you, I look at me, the church is not dead yet. But how do we go from three and five thousand saved to just struggling to get the church moving? How do we, what's hindering the salvation of the miracles? But he says this, what's causing conflict among you is not the source, your pleasure that wages war in your members. No, verse two, you lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You remember talking about murder with your words, your actions. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. So that you may spend it on yourself, pride and selfishness. What is it blocking our, 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 our receiving our healings, our promises? Verse 5, 
comes down to disobedience. I'm sorry, verse 5, number 5. Help me, Lord. Number 5, disobedience. You know, first, I said earlier, first Samuel tells obedience is better than sacrifice. First John 3 says, Dear friends, if our conscience doesn't condemn us, we can boldly look to God, the God who knows all and sees all, and receive from Him anything we ask. We receive it because we obey His commands and do what pleases Him. I'm reminded as we, as we close out this part of the service of 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and 15. Again, we, 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 we read it last week. We quoted it. But as I said last week, if we're not careful, we'll say it, and, 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 but not say it. Bible says, out of your mouth, your heart speaks. So I, w- I, want us to, I want to read this to you again, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. This is the answer. I mean, if you want revival in your house, in this house, if you want healings in the house, if you want to see those laws saved, what do we need to do, church? We talked about this this past week in the pastor's panel. If you had not seen it, you can go back and catch it online. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 15 says, and my people, my sheep, remember we talked about sheep earlier, who are called by my name or what? Humble themselves. I think as James tells us, if we go to one another, confess our sins. How humbling is that? And then we pray together. Tonight, what is it you're packing? Is it the office, the bitterness? You want to humble yourself? You lay it at the cross, but you make it right with your neighbor first. But if we humble ourselves and we pray and we seek God's face, not when we say seek, I'm talking about as a necessity. I gotta have it. Amen. I gotta have him. I gotta be like him. I need him. I need to seek his face. And what does it say? And turn from your wicked ways. He says, Then I will hear from heaven. What will he do? I will forgive your sin and what? I will heal your land. I love it. Verse 15. Now my eyes will be open. My ears attentive to the prayer offered in this place. Again, all this spoke today. The confirmation is for you and I today. God set us up today for healing in the house. <laughs> I want to ask you how many of you are going to leave the same way you came in. Because even me, the associate pastor of this house, even Joey Hicks, even as holy as you think that I am, will leave today changed. I refuse to leave the same way I came in. God can have more of me. I'm going to surrender it all to Him today. I have areas in my life that I need healed. Amen. Christina, I have areas in our marriage that we need healed. Are we the only ones? Our children have areas in their life that need to be healed. Today is the day of healing. Today is the day of salvation. Today, maybe you're battling addictions. Maybe you're battling fear. I laugh. Listen, I, I laugh. I tell a story about when they first put the directions on the, on the aisles at Walmart. I didn't, I, God, thank God I don't drive this way, but I wasn't paying any attention to the one-way directions. And I went down this aisle. And I, listen, understand, hear my heart. I thought this man was going to climb, climb the bread. I thought, what is he doing? I mean, he got pulled up against it. He was, I thought, and I had my mask on. And I looked, I thought, oh, shoot. And I said, sorry, sorry. And I grabbed my bread and turned around and went the other way, but he was fearful of me. You understand what I'm saying? He was going to climb the bread and go on the other side of the ice cream. I mean, he was getting out of there. Amen? But, but fear. How many of you are bound by fear? Listen, I'm not making light of COVID. It's real. We've seen it. We know. We, I, I, my family's experienced it. But I refuse to give in to fear. Because God is sovereign. He goes before me. Amen? He's got me. It, it, amen? He's got me without it. If I get it, he's got me with it. Amen? I'm walking in my promises. Amen? Are you with me this morning? And so listen, I told you about, it, it, it was short, but I want you to ask you to stand to your feet this morning. Right now, even as I speak, I'm going to ask you, God's going to show you, what is it in your life that you need healing in? What is it right now? What is it you're battling? Are you going to put on him in your dancing shoes? Are you going to put on the promises? Don't just pack them around. Or are you going to walk in them? So as I said with, with, with Audrey, she couldn't dance to her. She, she could dance good. I mean, don't get me wrong, honey. But when she put them shoes on, she could do the, the, the plat tays or the plat toes or whatever it is. Amen. She could do it all. Amen. On her toes because she had the equipment and she became one with it and she walked in her promises. Amen. So what is it today that you need to put on? 
What is it? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Who is it today, maybe in this house, you need to go to and say, listen, I don't know what it is, but I just want you to know, forgive me. I want you to know, I'm sorry. You want healing in your life? You do that. Amen. You humble yourself and do that. What is it you need to lay at the foot of the cross today? Amen. Am I the only one that's got anything? Amen. The altar is open as Brother Greg gets ready to play. Let's pray. Father God, we just come to you right now. Lord, I, I pray that your word went out, God, I, the way you wanted it, Lord. God, I receive it today. Man, I don't think it was just for me. I know, God, you confirmed and started my spirit. It's a word for now. God, the healing Sunday is not just one Sunday. It's our lifestyle. And God, you want to heal today. So we open the altars as your people stand. We surrender, God. We surrender. God, we're going to be obedient. I remember last Sunday, we said, we're going to do whatever it takes, God, to walk in your promises, to walk in these healings. God, show me right now what it is, God, that's blocking. Lord, you're moving in our life. You're moving in this church. God, we see our country. We see our state. God, we see our Campbellsville and the strife and the bitterness and, and maybe the hatred and, and what's going on, God. We want healing today. We want deliverance from drugs, God, in our community. God, we want deliverance from hatred, God. We know, we know the enemy's going to and fro, but God, right now, we surrender. We want to see you move. We want revival. God, as we look ahead to shake and to awaken, God, let it start right now. God, let revival start right now. I pray, Lord, let it start right now. So, Lord, have your will in your way right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.